Mass spectrometry, or MS for short, is a critical technique in bioanalytical chemistry and chemical biology. In this video, we are going to walk through an introduction to mass spectrometry, including an overview of how molecules are detected using mass spectrometry and the components of a mass spectrometer. So to begin, we need to look at what types of information do we get from mass spectrometry, or MS for short. What mass spectrometry is going to do is it is a technique in which molecules will be ionized and the mass to charge ratios of those ions detected. By detecting the mass to charge ratio of those ions, we will be able to infer information about the molecular weight of the compound and hence its chemical formula. And we can also, in some cases, use mass spectrometry to deduce some structural information by systematically fragmenting the molecule using the mass spectrometer and looking at the mass to charge ratio of those fragments. So the term that we keep coming back to here is the mass to charge ratio. So in mass spectrometry, what we are going to be doing is this is a technique where molecules are ionized. meaning that if a molecule initially has no net formal charge, we have to first form ions from that with a positive charge or a negative formal charge. And then what we will detect for those ions is the mass to charge ratio. The M over Z value is what we refer to as the mass to charge ratio. That is such a key term that I'm going to highlight that here. M standing for mass. Z standing for charge, and when we say mass, we're referring to the molecular mass there. So we're going to ionize molecules and detect the resulting mass to charge ratio of those ions to help us infer the molecular weight of the compound. And hence with the molecular weight, in many cases we can come up with candidates for the molecular formula. Additionally, Another application of this, other than just determining the molecular formula based on the molecular weight, is that we can fragment the molecule into fragment ions and use those fragment ions and their mass to charge ratios to determine structural information. So fragmentation of molecules and detection of the mass to charge ratios of the resulting ions of those fragments can give us clues about the molecular structure. Because when we fragment a particular chemical structure, we can predict what bonds are going to be most subject to breakage during these experiments when we are fragmenting molecules and look at the mass to charge ratio of those parts and pieces, those fragments, to glean information about the molecular formula of each individual fragment and hence piece together information about the structure of the molecule, such as individual functional groups, and chains or rings or other key features of the molecule. So how in the world does a mass spectrometer work? How does it enable us to ionize molecules, detect those ions, and use that information to infer information about the molecular weight of a molecule? And additionally, how does a mass spectrometer enable the fragmentation of molecules and allow us to look at the mass to charge ratios of those resulting fragment ions? Well, let's take a walk through the mass spectrometry instrument. In this video, looking at an overview of how a mass spectrometer accomplishes ionization of molecules and detection of those ions, we look at an overview of the mass spectrometry instrument. So a general overview of the instrument here. If we take a look at the parts and pieces of a mass spectrometer, what must occur in the beginning of the mass spectrometry experiment is that the compound within the mass spectrometer instrument has to be ionized. So first off, ionization of the compound. Because the majority of 
organic structures that we will look at have no net formal charge. And so initially, if they are not ions, they would not be detectable by the mass spectrometer. Since the mass spectrometer detects mass to charge ratio, if the charge is zero, we are not going to see that compound in mass spectrometry. So the compound has to be ionized first and foremost. In other words, a neutral molecule has to obtain a positive or negative net charge. So that's going to be the purpose of our ionization step occurring within the mass spectrometer. And we call the positive formal charge positive ionization mode. The negative formal charge occurs in so-called negative ionization mode. So we refer to the situation where we are evaluating positive ions as positive ionization mode. If there is a negative formal charge, we refer to that as negative ionization mode. These are the two modes in which organic molecules can be detected. And in some particular classes of molecules, it will be more advantageous to use positive ionization mode. For others, the compounds will be more readily detected using negative ionization mode. And for some functional groups, it won't matter. So when we think about the net formal charge being negative in negative ionization mode, compounds that very easily lose a proton would be able to form negative formal charges very easily and would be very suitable for negative ionization mode. So for example, if we think about our functional groups, carboxylic acids, molecules that have this COOH group, very readily lose the proton that I'm highlighting in red here. That is the acidic proton. It's very easily lost. And so one common ionization that occurs in negative ionization mode would be that we lose a proton from the carboxylic acid group in order for that compound to gain the positive formal charge that the organic molecule has. So if a proton is lost there from the carboxylic acid group, the resulting conjugate base product here would be this carboxylate with a negative formal charge. And this structure would be suitable for LCMS or for mass spectrometry because it has that net formal charge. And so if we are able to generate a molecule that has this net formal charge in so-called negative ionization mode, that negative ion would be able to be detected by the mass spectrometer. On the other hand, in positive ionization mode, a variety of compounds and of different classes are suitable for forming positive ions. One example would be if we think about an amine functional group. I'm going to fill in R groups here as either hydrogens or carbon atoms. It doesn't matter which. Keeping in mind that that nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons and is basic, what will happen is if this in positive ionization mode gains a proton, by gaining a proton, the proton would be picked up on the nitrogen atom, like so using our old friends, the electron pushing arrows. And as a result, the nitrogen now would have a positive formal charge and hence would be detectable by mass spectrometry using positive ionization mode. So at the onset of the experiment, the compound has to form an ion. That is an absolute prerequisite because the initial compounds here, the amine without a formal charge or the carboxylic acid, for example, without a formal charge would be absolutely invisible to the mass spectrometer is only once the compounds become ions, picking up a positive charge in positive mode or a negative formal charge in negative mode, that they will be able to be ultimately detected at the next step of mass spectrometry. So there are several different ways that ionization of compounds can be accomplished. In the next video, we will go into more depth about ways to ionize organic molecules in this ionization step. For now, in giving this overview of mass spectrometry, we are going to continue to look at the next step after a compound is ionized through a variety of different techniques we'll talk about in the next video. What happens after the ionization 
is that the ion enters what's referred to as the mass analyzer. As the term mass analyzer kind of implies, this is where the mass to charge ratio ions, the ions that have different mass to charge ratios are separated. So in the mass analyzer, there are a variety of different methods and we will go into those different methods in an upcoming video. The ions are separated based on their mass to charge ratio, their M over Z value, where M is the mass, Z is the charge, and keep in mind that the M here, when we say mass, we're referring to the mass of the ion. And this absolutely has to be ions are being separated by their mass to charge ratio. So ions with different mass to charge ratios are going to be detected differently in the mass analyzer and that will enable this separation of ions by mass to charge ratio so that ultimately then those ions that have been separated by their mass to charge ratio in the mass analyzer enter the detector which is where those differences in mass to charge ratio will be detected so the detector detects mass to charge ratio values. And this will be interfaced with the computer so that ultimately the display on the computer will output a mass spectrum for a particular compound. And that computer image display that you will see can show the data represented in a variety of ways, but the common way that it will be shown is with the mass to charge ratio for a particular mass spectrum on the x-axis. So I'm putting mass to charge ratio there on the x-axis. And then on the y-axis, either absolute units of, of absorption and detection, or more commonly the data are normalized to 100%. And listed here as percent abundance or alternatively percent intensity on the y-axis where whatever signal is the strongest will show up at a hundred percent so our scale here runs from zero to a hundred and then the mass to charge ratio axis the x-axis here ranges depending upon what type of structure you are trying to detect and I will show this going from a mass to charge ratio of zero to 1000. So this would enable detection of molecules of moderate complexity here. A mass to charge ratio of a thousand is not going to be a large enough molecular weight to detect some of the, some of the large proteins and things like that. But typical organic molecules would be captured within this zero to 1000 mass to charge ratio range. And this could be extended out depending upon the exact mass spectrometry instrument that you're using out to larger mass to charge ratios, hence enabling the detection of compounds with higher molecular weights. So on this plot, what you would generally see is signals where the largest signal is normalized to 100% there on the y-axis. And typically you will see other signals show up as well that are more minor signals representing minor ions and representing um, potentially some fragments of the compound that was um, the complete intact molecule. Those fragments would represent situations where the molecule during the process of ionization and analysis fragmented, meaning that some of the chemical bonds broke enabling the detection of fragments, parts and pieces of the molecule as a whole. So what we will do in the next video is we are going to look at the ways that compounds are ionized for mass spectrometry. And then the video after that, we're going to look at the different types of mass analyzers. How do we go about separating ions based on their mass to charge ratio for these types of experiments? Mass spectrometry in general is a extremely important tool in the field of chemical biology because it allows us to detect a variety of classes of biomolecules. It also can be used quantitatively to enable us to determine the relative amounts of biomolecules in one sample versus another. Um, for example, if 
one we're looking for biomarkers of a particular disease, one could compare by mass spectrometry particular metabolites that are present in healthy individuals versus diseased individuals and make conclusions about particular biomarkers biomarkers, particular metabolites that are up or down regulated in diseased persons versus healthy persons and use that as a molecular tool or molecular marker to identify which persons are healthy versus diseased in a really quick and efficient manner. We can also use mass spectrometry in a so-called imaging mass spectrometry mode to scan the surfaces of organisms or the surfaces of cells to evaluate where different molecules are located within a particular within a particular cell or within a particular organism to determine regions where molecules are super concentrated or super dilute and use that to piece together understanding of how cellular systems work really getting at the heart of chemical biology because it's using a chemical tool mass spectrometry to understand how a biological system works and functions. So we will get into some of those applications a few videos down the road here. But for now, in the next unit, we're going to focus on ionization of compounds.